What's the matter, Lucy? Don't you like it? I can't believe it's real. After all we've been through. Think what it means. New land. New hope. New hope? See, you couldn't have picked a better name for it. New Hope Valley. I suppose. Well, well. Here he comes at last. All's well along the road. You must have stopped to pick daisies. <laughs> Good luck, pony boy. to be in pretty soon. Here it comes now, Grandpa. He sure is riding. Pony Express. Here he comes. Make way for the Pony Express. <laughs> Major Stephen Braddock? I'm Major Braddock. Special dispatch for you, sir. Thank you. Attention, everybody. To the citizens of this community, greetings. In commemoration of the founding of New Hope Valley 50 years ago today, I, Stephen Braddock, 
have the honor and do hereby declare a holiday and anniversary jubilee, which is now officially open. <laughs> <laughs> nice riding, Tony. I reckon they didn't make any better time in the old days. Thanks, Major. We nearly got you, didn't we? Those arrows are mighty close here, Stevie. Gosh, you fellas really look keen in those outfits. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, seeing as how our pony boy beat the dinner bell, it looks like we'll have to amuse ourselves until the women folks are ready to feed us. Oh, I reckon we can wait. <laughs> I hope it won't be long. <laughs> 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 Hiya, Stoney. Hello, Bessie. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you doing here? Picking up napkins. I thought I could help. You can. Getting out of our way. Oh, Celia. Now, look, this is woman's work. You run along and play with your two buddies. They're not here yet. Well, they better hurry. Don't worry, they always show up before the grub's on the table. Hiya. Well, what delayed you this time? Well, after that ride, I had to stop and let my horse rest. Well, come on. My stomach thinks my mouth is closed for repairs. Yeah, I'm right with you. <clears throat> Oh, that's all right. Hiya, Tucson. Howdy. Mr. Gilbert, you ought to be glad to meet Smith and Jocelyn. How do you do? And thanks. You're welcome. Oh, forget it. Say, are you two coming to the celebration? That's right. Today is the big day, isn't it? I reckon you better give your horses a chance to cool off. We'll be seeing you later. Okay, so long. It's a great day to bring them bad news. Well, it can't be helped. Hiya, fellas. Hello, Stevie. Things started yet? The boys are just tuning up. Good. Well, let's get at it. Well, not a bad chimney. I've seen better. Excuse me, fellas. Looks like the kid's got the right idea. Let's see if we can do as well. I'm kind of choosy who I dance with. The gal I picked's got to be mighty smart. And a little crazy, too. Oh, is that so? Yeah, big lug. Hello, honey. <laughs> yes. 
Blondes aren't my type anyway. Pony boy! Face it like a man. Where have you been? I've been busy. But I want to look after you. All right. Look. Uh, we'd have been here sooner, but he was busy stopping a runaway. He did? Oh, how wonderful! <laughs> well, you see, it was just me and uh, me and Tucson. Oh, well, he's just being modest. Well, come on, tell me all about it. What happened? Well, you see, the the uh, the horses. <laughs> so <laughs> long, pony boy. Rode up alongside. Transferred to the buggy and pulled the horses to a dead stop. That's all there is to it. Oh, how wonderful! Listen, folks, the next number will be a tag dance. Ready? Let's move the table. Today, a little band of pioneers looked down on this valley for the first time. But we're not here just to celebrate our golden jubilee. We are also here to honor the man who led those pioneers. A man whose unfailing courage and leadership inspired them throughout the long, perilous journey. I don't need to tell you who he is. You already know him as our oldest and best loved citizen, Major Stephen Braddock. <laughs> well, thanks for the nice send-off, Bill. <laughs> but I do wish you'd stop making people think I'm older than Methuselah. Oh. <laughs> but seriously, folks, I'm mighty grateful to be standing here today. All this makes me realize just what New Hope Valley stands for. We came out here and found a wilderness. We had to dig and scratch and sweat to build our homes. But none of us seemed to mind much because we all felt the same way. Deep down inside, we all had the feeling that we'd come home. It gave us a living. It gave us crops and grass for our herds. While well, we raised our families here, watched them grow up to manhood and womanhood. In fact, the, 
The Lord has been so good to us that he hasn't left us much to ask for. Unless it's this. Keep us safe, O oh Lord. Keep us humble. And if it's all right with you, we'd like to keep on just as we have in the past. And if our children and our children's children can know the same peace and contentment that we have known, we'll be more than satisfied. I reckon that's all that anyone could ask. Amen. 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 I'd rather be shot than have to tell them. I know. But I think they'd rather hear it from you. <laughs> Folks, I suppose you're all acquainted with our assemblyman, the Right Honorable William Proctor, and this is Mr. Gilbert from the Metropole Construction Company. I have some very bad news for you. These gentlemen bring word from the capital the New Hope Valley has been condemned. Condemned? What do you mean? It seems that Metropole City needs more water and power. So the state has decided to build a dam across Cutstone Canyon and turn the valley into a reservoir. But they already have a reservoir at Cascade. What's the matter with that? It isn't large enough. But they can't do that. Our homes are here. What'll become of us? The state will buy our land and move us out. Now that's real nice of the state. Haven't we anything to say about it? But what if we don't want to sell? I'm afraid you have no choice, friends. The legislature has the power to condemn private property when it's needed for a public project. However, you'll receive full cash value for your land. Do you think that money can make up for what we put into this valley? That's right. Why can't Metropole get their water from somewhere else? Why should we be turned out? Men, we all feel the same way, but there's nothing we can do. Oh, yes, there is. Maybe you're willing to take this lion down, but I'm going to fight. That's the stuff, Major. We're with you. Just let him try and run us off. Yeah, and just let him start trying to build a dam around here. Just a minute. Listen to me. What are you butting in for? Well, I happen to be in charge of construction. The state authorized me to build a dam. And it's going to be built whether you like it or not. Take it easy. You don't know the kind of people you're dealing with, mister. But he'll find out. down a decision in this case, the court wishes to state that it fully realizes the human values involved. One can't help but sympathize with the plight of the settlers. However, Metropole City, with its rapidly increasing population, must have additional water reserve or be faced with the danger of a shortage. Unfortunately, the only feasible site for the new reservoir is New Hope Valley. Basing our decision on the theory of the greatest good for the greatest number, we are forced to uphold the rights of the state to condemn this property. Here's your check from the state, Jim. So they think they can force me to sell.
That's what I did with mine. What are we going to do, Granddad? We're going to keep right on fighting. None of them high-priced lawyers are going to take our homes away from us. Any further orders, Chief? No. You're in charge, Harmon. The ranchers get tough, you get tougher. I expect you to move in and have your camp up by sundown. What's that? The wagons are coming through the pass now. Get my rifle, Stevie. Grandpa, what are you going to do? There's only one way those wagons can get to Cutstone. That's across my land. But they've been granted a right-of-way. Not for me, they haven't. Can I go with you, Grap? No, you stay here with your sister. Oh, Grandpa, please. They're on their way. Here, Stevie just told me. Looks like we got reinforcements. All right, boys, let's get to work. I don't know why I can't go with them. I can shoot as good as they can. Stevie, we don't want any shooting. Maybe there's only some way to stop them. Are the musketeers back? I don't know. Let's hope they are. Granddad might listen to them. I'll go get them. Oh, no, you don't. You stay here. I'll go. Hello, Zeke. Howdy, boys. Just getting back? Did you have a good time at the city? No. We didn't go to have a good time, neither. Well, you sure got here in time. You was luckier I'd had to take that back to the post office. Seems to me like everybody's getting one of those registered letters today. Is that so? This one's from the state capitol. It's a check for our land. Well, that's sure prompt service. Too prompt to suit me. $3,200 isn't bad for a little bit of cattle range. Not good, either. Tony, the construction wagons are coming. Grandpa and the other ranchers have gone out to stop them. Why, they might as well declare war on the city of Metropole. I know. Maybe you boys can make them listen to reason. I couldn't. Well, didn't the Major get a check for his ranch? He sure did. I delivered it. Got it and tore it up. He would. <laughs> Hold it. 
Hey, will you look at that? Yeah. Say, what's the idea? You got eyes, ain't you? This is my property, and I intend to protect it. Listen, Grandpa, I ain't wasting no time arguing. I've got my orders to bring those wagons through. Go ahead and try it if you want a skin full of lead. Well, I'll give you exactly five minutes to clear this road, or else we're coming down and clear it for you. You'll have to get us first. According to Miss Seeley, the Major must be on the warpath. Yes, and he's liable to land himself in the penitentiary, too. What's this about the ranchers trying to stop my wagon, Sheriff? We'll know more about it when we get there. Yes, but they were all served notices. I know, but folks are liable to get kind of unreasonable when their homes are taken away from them. Start your wagon. Come on, Dixon. We'll show these fools. Anybody. Yeah, as quick as it burns out, we'll move through. Stay here, Celia. Burn him alive. A low down engine trick. That's just what I was thinking. Come on, fellas. We'd better get out of here. Just man.
looks like a first-class fight. What are you, a referee or a peace officer? I'm sorry, boys, but I'll have to take you in. There's a stiff penalty for damaging state property, and I'm going to see that you get the limit. Here's a piece of state's property you sure damaged. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys. You're in no position to prosecute. No. They attacked my wagons and fired on my crew. Your crew got back at him with burning oil. That's a pretty unpleasant picture, MC. An investigation could do you a lot of harm. Bound to cause a delay. You want to finish this job on schedule, don't you? Well, naturally, but how can I with a bunch of fighting fools underfoot? I think I have a solution for that. Let's consider this from the standpoint of the ranchers. They have to give up their homes, move elsewhere, possibly be separated from family and friends. Yeah, I know. They behave themselves, they can stay until the dam's finished. That gives them plenty of time to relocate. You forget, MC, that some of these people have never been outside of this valley. They don't know where to go, where to look for new homes. So it's up to us to help them. Certainly getting benevolent. Don't worry, I'm looking out for Bill Proctor. I've just run across a very promising real estate deal. With your cooperation, I think I could persuade the ranchers to invest. They won't even listen to you. They might listen to the mesquiteers. Now, don't you worry, men. Judge Lawson will have us out of here pretty soon, and then we'll show them we've just begun to fight. We've just begun to fight. And look where we are. But we got the right on our side. We're bound to win. Oh, it's not in the cards, Major. A handful of men against a great big city. Is that so? Well, the Greeks did it. Why, they took the city of Troy with less men than we got. No. How did they work it? With a wooden horse. A wooden horse? Yes, sirree, a great big wooden horse. <laughs> now, that's too big a whopper for us to take, Major. If you'd have said a live horse, we might have believed you. Wait a minute, boys. Just the musketeers. The rest of you stay here. Why are we the only ones being let out? Search me. All I know is Gilbert wants you over at his office. You boys must realize you can't stop progress. Letting loose that burning fuel tank is your idea of progress, I suppose. No, it isn't. In fact, as soon as I heard about it, I discharged Harmon. However, this dam's going to be built if we have to call out the National Guard. So why not be sensible and start making plans for the future? Well, that's all right with me. Sure. If there ain't a catch in it. Oh, no, there's no catch. The most public-spirited man in the state has worked out a plan that I think should meet with your approval. If you endorse it, I feel confident the other ranchers will follow suit. Ah, here he is now. Hello, boys. Howdy. I want you to meet Mr. Dodge. Mr. Dodge, these are the Mesquiteers. Glad to know you. How do you do, sir? Mr. Dodge represents a big land development that uh, will solve the problem of new homes for your ranchers. Now, if the majority are willing to invest, they can get good land at a great reduction. But I'll let Mr. Dodge tell you about it. I'd rather show you than tell you. What are those, your samples? <laughs> you might call it that, yeah. Well, that's nothing but desert land. Is that your idea of a good investment? One of the best, Mr. Jocelyn. You're looking at pictures of the Empire Valley before it was reclaimed by irrigation. This is the same country the way it looks today. Fine truck farms and orchards. And plenty of grazing land for cattle. You've seen what water did for Empire Valley. It can do the same for this land we're being offered. And with the money we receive from the state, we can buy two acres for every acre of ours that we give up. And still have enough money left for our first year's expenses. Well, what do you say, men? Sounds like a pretty fair proposition to me. Yeah, well, I don't think we can do any better. How do you feel about it, Major? Well, I still don't understand how you're going to get water over there. That's quite simple. Our company intends to run a pipeline from here across the Devil's Acres. Yeah. But how are you going to get it over the mountains? Tunnel through. Our work will be completed by the time you're ready to move in. And in a few years, gentlemen, 
That land will be worth three times what you're paying for it. Uh, maybe so. If this deal is all that you say it is. We checked the Atlas Company pretty thoroughly. We're not asking you gentlemen to put up any money until we get the pipeline started. Get all the herds rounded up. Ready to leave right now. You ain't short-handed, are you? No, young fella, you ain't going on any cattle drive. Oh, Graham. Major will need you here, Stevie. Mighty big job leading a wagon train. Guess it is. Hey, just when do you figure on leaving? Oh, we ought to be able to pull out about the end of the week. All right, Major. See you at Devil's Acres. Yeah. Good luck. Cattle will be needing water pretty soon. Devil's Acres is right over that ridge. We can water them there. There's a pipeline over yonder. Hey, look. Looks like the ranchers aren't going to have any water when they get here. Why, they haven't even started to drill the tunnel. I don't believe they ever intended to. But what is the sense in laying all that pipe there? Fool us into buying a lot of worthless land. Well, they sure succeeded. And we help them sell the ranchers a bill of goods. I reckon we'd better get busy and see what we can do about it. Take the cattle back to the valley. We're heading for the county seat. The are on their way out to see you. Yeah? Maybe I better not be here when they arrive. If I were you, I'd make a long trip. You certainly put me in a swell spot with that phony land deal of yours. Why? I don't understand. Well, I had to promise them I'd let the ranchers stay. Well, you're not gonna do it, are you? What do you think I am? I collect a fat bonus if I finish that job on time, and nothing's gonna stop me. We were expected. Come on, get down there. Come on. Well, here 
here we are. Your grandma and I came out here together, Celia. We helped to settle this place. But now, now I've got to go and leave her behind. It just doesn't seem right. She'd want you to go, Grandpa. The people are going to need a leader now more than they ever did. Maybe you're right. smart telling Gilbert where we were heading well at least we found one thing out he and Proctor are working together that'll do the ranchers a lot of good by this time they're probably on their way to Devil's Acres and Gilbert's all set to flood the valley
why with those pipelines not going through the mountains, there's no possible chance of ever getting any water into Devil's Acres. We'll have no place to live if our homes are washed away. <laughs> I could have told you the whole thing was a fraud. You're right, Major, but now we gotta stop them from flooding that valley. I'm going with you. That goes for me, too. through on schedule, all right. I've never fallen down on a job yet. Hey, look! You better get the boys together. There may be trouble. Looks more like the pictures those crooks showed us. What do you think we ought to call it? Oh, it's so slick and pretty. Let's call it New New Hope. Now, that sounds like you're stuttering. 
Well, they named another town Walla Walla. Yeah, and another one Sing Sing. <laughs> <laughs>